With any new assignment, a little prior planning and thinking can be the difference between a pass and a credit, a distinction and a high distinction. You can save yourself a lot of time and effort by doing some preparation before you start researching and writing. Understanding exactly what the assignment question is asking you to do is the key to success. So here are Study Smarter's three top tips for tackling assignment questions. 1. Unpack the question. 2. Interrogate the question. And 3. Hunt for more clues. Let's start with unpacking the question. You can break down any assignment into three key components the task, the topic, and the scope. For example, say the assignment asks you to review the scientific evidence for evolution. The word review is the task, evolution is the topic of the assignment, and most importantly, the scientific evidence part limits the scope of the assignment. Here's a more complex assignment question. Here, the task is easy to spot. The topic is this part, and the scope portion is that part that asks you to cite recent examples. So once you've identified the task, topic and scope of the assignment, you can unpack these three elements further. Let's look at the task first. The task sets out exactly what you're being asked to do. In assignment questions, you'll often see directions such as argue, contrast and define, and these are called task words. At university, these task words have specific meanings. Here are a few examples. For instance, as you can see at the bottom of the table, discuss is a common one you see in assignments. If you've been asked to discuss something, it often means you've been asked to examine key points related to a particular topic, possible interpretations, and reasons for and against. Here are a few more. Another common task word is summarize, which you can see at the bottom again. This involves reducing a large body of information into a brief outline of the main points. So as you can see, each task word has a very specific meaning and set of instructions associated with it. So once you understand exactly the task you've been set, then you can look at the topic and scope of the assignment in more detail. The topic is usually the easiest thing to spot, and because it's so easy to spot, we often fall into the trap of rushing off to start researching and writing without paying attention to what the assignment is really asking us to do. To avoid this, it's necessary to look at the topic and the scope of the assignment together. By doing this, you can see the limits of the assignment, and you can start planning the best way to approach it. The topic and the scope together give important clues about how much you have to do and in what depth. In the first example, where it asks you to review the scientific evidence for evolution, this means that the assignment is not asking for a broad explanation of the process of evolution or a description of the cultural impact of evolutionary theory or its history. It specifically asks for a review of the scientific evidence on the subject. So as you can see, the scope puts limits on the topic of the assignment. If you start researching and writing before you understand the scope of the project, you run the risk of doing unnecessary work, going off track, or missing the point entirely. By looking at the three key elements of the assignment together, you can start to unpack what you already know and start thinking about what you need to do to answer the question. You might ask yourself, what exactly am I being asked to do? What's the task? What's the scope of the project? What's relevant and what's not relevant? What do I already know about the subject? And what information do I need to find out? And where are the best places to start looking for more information? So once you've done some work unpacking the question, you'll be ready to follow our next top tip, which is interrogate the question. Interrogating the question means looking at the assignment and seeing if you can extract more information from it. This is the thinking stage. Remember, the more thinking and planning you do before you start writing, the more focused your research and writing will be. This will help you to consider the whole question and preempt some of the things the person marking your assignment will be looking for. To interrogate the question, use the five W's and one H. This involves looking at the question and asking who or which, what, where, when, why, and how. This will help you to go into more depth and put the question into some sort of context. Using the example we looked at earlier, when you apply the five W's and one H to the assignment question, you can come up with other questions that might strengthen your focus. For instance, you could start interrogating the question and jotting down a few ideas such as, 
What evidence? What scientific evidence should you focus on? And from what research area? Whose evidence? Are you going to focus on research from a particular country? And the evolution of what exactly? Or even when? Are you going to look at recent studies or earlier research or both? So once you've generated all these possibilities and made decisions on the best way to proceed, it's time to hunt for more clues. Be on the lookout for clues from the assignment description, paying particular attention to details like, is there a list of assessment criteria? Is there a breakdown of marks, especially if there's subsections worth different percentages? Are there any specific formatting and presentation requirements? Have they told you what referencing style you should use? And also, what's the word limit? This is an important one. The general rule is to make sure that you keep within 10% of the word limit either way, because too little or too many words could end up costing you marks. Finally, after analysing the question, if there's anything you're not sure about, ask your lecturer or tutor for more details. We hope you've enjoyed the Study Smarter screencast, and remember, you can improve your understanding of assignment questions by unpacking the question, interrogating the question, and hunting for more clues. If you'd like to find out more about our services, including our drop-in sessions, workshops, and study survival guides, visit www.studysmarter.uwa.edu.au or find us on Facebook and Twitter.